Hi everybody and welcome back to another business analysis video. In today's video I'll be talking to you about the Moscow prioritization technique. What it is, when to use it and how to use it as a business analyst. So there are several techniques that may be used for prioritizing or to determine the level of prioritization associated with requirements, okay? The approach used generally varies between organizations or projects within the organization. And some examples include the high, medium or low priority style of uh, prioritizing requirements or using a mandatory, desirable or nice to have as your um, requirements prioritization technique. Um, some other organizations or projects could also use the green, yellow and red system of prioritization. However, the Moscow prioritization technique is one of my go-tos and favorite method of prioritizing my requirements. So the Moscow is an acronym which stands for the must have, the should have, the could have, the won't have this time, which can also be thought of as a wish. The O's within this acronym don't mean anything and they're just placed there to make sense of the sound of the acronym. So what exactly is the must have and how do you identify this when you have a list of requirements? Um, the must have, think of these as non-negotiables, the things that you need for your project or the product or the release. Um, they're mandatory requirements without which the system offers no value. So without having that particular requirement, your system wouldn't perform as it should. It really, really needs that requirement to perform. Now, in order for you to determine what the must have is, you should ask three questions. And these questions are, what will happen if this requirement is not included in this release? Okay, you really want to identify and answer that question when you have the list of requirements, think about it. Is this requirement um, a necessity and what will happen if we don't have that requirement for this release? Another question you should ask is, is there a simple way to accomplish this requirement? And the third question you should ask is, will the product or the system work without this requirement so they're quite related questions but these are the things you need to really really question so that you can identify your must-have for your um, release and for the prioritization of your requirements and so that you don't miss the really really important requirements that needs to be released at certain times depending on the methodology that you're um, adopting within the organization or for the project Number two is the should have, okay? The should have is also an important requirement and it also must be delivered, but they're not vital. So where time is short, they could be delayed for future releases. Um, generally, they're not necessary for the product to be completed, but they will add a lot of value for a release or for the product. So when you have all your must have and you've determined what should be delivered for a release, if you're able to add your should have to that release and if you see that it would add value, go ahead and add those as part of your deliverable for that release. Now the could have is, it has a much smaller impact if it's left out of your requirements for that particular release. They generally will be quite beneficial to include if they don't cost too much. So remember the should have is referring to the time factor. Can we deliver this within this certain time um, and the value it would add? Whereas the could have is, do we have the money to add this extra thing to our list of requirements? So they would be beneficial to include if they don't cost too much or if they don't take too long to deliver. Again, there is also a time factor within this could have. And generally, they're not necessarily a core function of the product. Now, the final W on the Moscow acronym is the want to have. 
which some people also would refer to as won't have this time or would like to have or a wish okay so think about it in this way uh, but generally it means I want to have this requirement but I won't have it this time um, there are requirements that may be needed in the future but not required for this delivery so for the whole delivery of our product they're not necessarily required um, think of it as a wish like I said it allows you to maintain what will or will not be included for each release within your requirements prioritization now generally some requirements may need further consideration may need further thoughts around how they can be delivered because they could cause delays to some of the mandatory part or the mandatory requirements um, if they were implemented earlier than thought okay so you need to think about the impact of these various requirements on your must-have requirement because those are the key ones that we want to be able to deliver for the success of the product and the expectations of the stakeholders so what exactly are the benefits of using the moscow prioritization technique when exactly do we use this they're suitable when several increments of a solution are to be implemented now when you think of several increments you're thinking of agile so generally they're very suitable and very um good technique um for prioritization prioritizing your requirements within the agile project delivery because you are delivering iteratively so in one release you will have all your must must have requirements within that release for the certain period of time that you're you're delivering that release in your next release you need to have your must haves as well and again you need to think about the impact of the could have the should have and then the wish within within that and what yeah what impact or what effects they would have um secondly it allows you to build a consensus right you're able to work with the Moscow um, in a workshop setting, in your interview, the stakeholders are able to share their views and their perspectives of the necessity or the wants for these requirements, the importance of these requirements and what impact it would have on their uh, various areas or their work. Um, so it really allows you to build consensus. Everybody can decide these are all the must have, this is what I would like to have, these are the things that we could have at certain points if we have the funds. And thirdly, it also allows you to gain a broader perspective around what is really important. So again, like I mentioned, it allows you to build that consensus and you have that broad perspective of all the various stakeholders about what exactly is important to them for the delivery of the product. So that's it for today's video. I hope you've enjoyed this content about the Moscow prioritization technique, what it is, how to use it and when to use it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please click the subscribe button, share this content and like this video. You never know who it might help. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Peace.